Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avery Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Jones Stratos. This board features Jones's directional rocker. Don't let it fool you, it's directional cam rocker. So you get more rocker in the nose, camber underfoot, and a shorter rocker in the tail. What this is gonna give you is the load, pop, snap, and drive of traditional camber underfoot, but with that rocker in the nose, you're gonna get ease of entry in and out of turns, as well as more optimal powder float. This board's available in 153, 156, 158 wide, 159, 161 wide, 162, and 164 wide. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a day that was bluebird, gray skies with snow squalls. Sometimes you'd have zero wind, but then you'd have a snow squall come in. You had chopped chunder, ice, heavy snow, lightweight snow, dust covered groomers, perfect corduroy, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. All right, so since the last time I rode this board, it got a lot stiffer, and I mean a lot. It's not a full on plank, but it's noticeably stiffer and it's a directional flex, meaning slightly softer nose and that's accentuated by that rocker, progressively stiffening up right from where that rocker meets the camber back through the tail. The torsional flex takes a lot of effort to twist it. Basically, yeah, this board's a lot stiffer. When it comes to stability, what you get is some flap in the nose that resonates back underfoot. It's not enough to really foot fatigue you, but it's there, you will feel it. And when you get up to speed and the nose is flapping super hard, you can hear and feel that donk of it hitting, and that'll slightly resonate more under the front foot. And really run it out terrain, you got two options with it. It's either gonna kill everything in front of it and slam it into the ground, or it's gonna bounce off of it. If it bounces off of it, keep your knees bent. You'll thank me for that later. But if it's gonna skip over the top, just you're gonna be able to have smooth sailing and not worry about it. This isn't the snappiest deck I've been on. In fact, you get a bit of a workout when you load that camber section up. So when you load that up, roll back on the tail to engage right where that rocker is, you expect it to have a little bit of spring and you'll get that but it's still not the snappiest board. It's got enough to pop off of things or porpoise through fresh snow, but if you're looking for something that you're really gonna boost a side hit with, you're not gonna get it with this board. I hate my life for trying to butter with this thing. I, I, I do, I'm pretty sure I pulled a muscle in my back. So the tail takes a lot of effort and you're just gonna get a wheelie if you're really lucky and you're leveraged so far out that you're probably just gonna go ass over tea kettle with the nose and popping a 180 into it. It hates you the whole time. It just wants to set down or fight you. That's it. Like, you, you don't want to butter with this thing. You just don't. When this board locks in, it locks in, and I'll give it that. But what you got to understand is to engage it from the front foot, you're throwing your hip out over the nose. So you're really throwing your weight into the front of this board to get it to engage. And then you've got to keep speed and have space to maintain that transition of body weight to get it to drive from the center back through the tail. Basically, it's a very front foot heavy board for steering and driving it, and you're putting a lot of work into it, and you want space, because when you do, you can really lock in that carve, swoop it from one side of the trail back to the other. But when you get into those more medium carves or tight, quick setup turns, you're giving yourself a body workout. You're really putting your weight into it. You're really flexing that camber to drive it, to get it to engage underfoot. It just takes that much work. So you gotta be aware of that with how it's gonna carve. But, like I said, when it locks in, it really locks in. And that's nice because when you lay a carve over, you wanna know that you're locked in. And this board will take you to the ends of the earth, locked in on edge until it absolutely must disengage because you've hit the side of the trail and you're gonna shoot off into the trees. Who's this board for? The heavy free ride guy that wants to charge. I think I've been understating how stiff this thing is previously before riding the new version of it, because holy crap, is it a chore to work this board to drive it, to engage it, to do anything with it. I mean, I was tired afterwards, legitimately tired. Like this board took a lot out of me. This is an aggressive board. It really, really is. I don't remember it being this way. The fact that the Project X is easier to ride than this speaks volumes about it. So yeah, you heavy free ride guys, this is uh, definitely something to consider. Comparable boards, the Karua Transition Finder Plus, the Amplid Soli Grail, the Nitro Pantera. 
Finding recommendations, the Jones Apollo, the Ride A10, the Union Atlas Pro. This has been my review of the Jones Stratus. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you wanna support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avrin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Thank you.